This is the GeForce GTX 1060. It's one of the most popular graphics cards right now, to this day remaining first on Steam's hardware survey. This can be attributed to its excellent price to performance, as it's easy to find for cheap on the used market and does very well in a lot of new games. We already know how this mid-range beast holds up today, but something I wondered was how well does it stack up against some older high-end cards? Do some old beasts have it in them to strike down a newer mid-range monster? In this video, we're looking to answer that question. To start, I needed to select some suitable cards to test against the 1060. I wanted to feature one older AMD card and one older Nvidia card, so I dug through my box of video cards to see what I could find. On the AMD side of the fence, I quickly found a suitable contender, the Radeon HD 7950. Released back in early 2012, this slightly cut down Tahiti graphics card was offered as a more affordable version of the Monster HD 7970. As such, its Tahiti Pro GPU featured 1792 shading units cut down from 2048, as well as a conservative 800MHz clock speed. Now, VRAM remained relatively unchanged as it retained the 7970's 3GB of GDR5, but it's running a bit slower at 1250MHz. Thanks to running on a wide 384-bit bus though, this puts memory bandwidth at a nice 240GB per second, which has the memory a good bit faster than on the little 1060. Power consumption is much greater though, coming in at 200 watts and requiring two 6-pin peg connectors to keep the card fed with juice. Now we already know that this card has aged very well thanks to AMD's GCN architecture, so there's a good chance it could compete pretty well with the 1060. So now that we have our AMD card, it was time to find something older by Nvidia. This was an easy choice too as I quickly had my mind set on the GeForce GTX 770. Released in mid-2013 for a price of $399 USD, this card was essentially a binned and overclocked GTX 680 offered at a new low price. It featured the same fully unlocked GK104 GPU with 1536 shading units and came clocked a bit higher at 1046MHz base and 1085MHz boost. Now the card's main weakness is its anemic amount of VRAM with only 2GB of GDDR5. This shouldn't be a major issue in a majority of tests but we may have to crank down texture resolution in some of them. Anyway, the memory is clocked much higher than the 7950 at 1753MHz, but it's running on a narrower 256-bit bus making for 224GB per second of total memory bandwidth. This card is the big pig of the bunch requiring 250 watts of power, with all the extra juice coming from one 8-pin and one 6-pin peg connector. This high power draw can be attributed to the increased voltage and clock speeds over the GTX 680. Now I go over this a lot more in my dedicated video on this card, but due to some architectural deficiencies, Kepler has issues keeping all shaders in an SM busy without special optimization tricks, which has caused these Kepler cards to perform quite poorly in newer games with driver support being dropped last year. With the older contender selected, let's finally take a look at the GTX 1060. The 3GB version is making use of a slightly cut down GP106 core with one of the SMs disabled, making for 1152 shading units. For VRAM, the 3GB version has, well, 3GB of GDDR5, which is clocked at a fast 2002MHz. Now it's running on a slightly narrow 192-bit bus, with memory bandwidth coming at 192GB per second, which as we saw is lower than the older high-end cards. As to be expected, the power consumption is much improved, coming in at just 120 watts and requiring one 6-pin peg connector for external power. This little guy may not look like much, but the ace up its sleeve is driver support. Unlike the older cards, this thing still receives the latest and greatest drivers directly from Nvidia and should continue to for a few more years to come. As such, this card thrives in newer games and in general the older cards will have a hard time keeping up in those scenarios, seeing as they have to cope with legacy drivers. Now enough on the cards, let's get into testing them out. For the older high ends, I opted to overclock them to give them a better fighting chance against the 1060. For the HD7950, I dialed in the core clock by 350MHz up to 1150MHz, which is a huge 44% increase over stock. As for the memory, I went for a clock speed of 1600MHz, which is a 28% increase over stock frequencies. Now in order to achieve these speeds, I did have to increase the core voltages by 169mV to 1.2V. The card was rock solid stable at these settings, but I had to use a fixed fan speed of 75% to keep temps in check, and at this speed, the card kinda turns into a hovercraft. As for the GTX 770, I increased core clocks by 75MHz, and with GPU boost this made for a final clock speed of around 1280MHz, give or take because GPU boost is such a finicky creature. Now this makes for an 18% clock bump over the default boost speed of 1085MHz, 
which the card stuck to its stock settings. For memory, I increased it by 247 MHz up to 2 GHz, which is a 14% increase over stock. Now unfortunately, voltage control is extremely limited on the 770, and I was only able to bump up voltage by a minuscule 12 mV, but even so, the card was totally stable at these settings. I did have to peg the fan at 100% in order to keep temps reasonable, and it's also really loud. I won't be overclocking the 1060 today, as unfortunately this card's cooling is just not very good. All it is is an extruded aluminum heatsink with a copper slug in the middle. In fact, this card's cooling can barely handle it at stock speeds, as you'll notice in pretty much all tests the card ran above 80 degrees C. Keep in mind this caused the card to throttle below its boost clock, falling between 1550 and 1650 MHz in most situations. To mitigate this, I tried to peg the fan at 100%, but temps remained the same and I still noticed inconsistent boost behavior. I wish I could do something to solve this, but unfortunately I don't have any aftermarket cooling, so we'll just have to make do with it. Keep in mind most 1060s with decent cooling should be able to boost and stick to around the 1800 MHz range. The test system is my main PC, and it has a Core i7-7700K overclocked to 4.8GHz, as well as 16GB of DDR4 running at 2800 MHz. Also, I'll put the drivers used for testing on screen, along with the rest of the system specs. For the test suite, I decided to keep it simple with 8 games. Some are newer, some are older, but almost all the games tested today are DX11 titles. I don't have any new AAA games to test, and that's probably a good thing as the GTX 770's DirectX 12 support is really limited. Anyhow, there's a wide range of games here, so overall performance of the cards should be represented. That being said, let's now dig into some testing. And the first game up is GTA 5. Here I use the built-in benchmark with a very high settings in 4xAA at 1080p. Now I did decrease textures to normal in order to accommodate the GTX 770's lack of VRAM. Anyhow, here the 1060 led the pack with 75 frames per second on average. Now this made it 29% faster than the next best thing, the overclocked GTX 770. The stock HD 7950 is the slowest performer here, averaging 37 frames per second. Now I'm happy to report that its overclock scaling was great, as when overclocked the 7950 managed to leap by 38% and overtake the stock 770 by the skin of its teeth, or only 2%. Frame times are great on all cards, and overall this game was a great showing for all of them, but it's clear to see that the 1060's win isn't a small one. CSGO is a must test, as to this day it remains the most played game on Steam. I used the community made benchmark with the low settings and shadows set to high at 1080p, and the 1060 still comes out on top with an average frame rate of 334 frames per second. Now the 1060's lead drastically shrunk against the overclock 770, as it only led here by 13%. The HD 7950 saw nice gains when overclocked, but it wasn't enough to pass the stock 770. Frame times look awful on all the cards, and this is due to the smoke sections of the benchmark, which tanks the frame rate. During regular gameplay, frame times will be massively improved. As a side note, the HD 7950 saw some weird regression in the frame times when overclocked, and this odd behavior was repeatable in multiple runs. Next up is another very popular title and one that I haven't tested in a really long time, Fortnite. Here I used the game's replay feature as allowed for very consistent results between runs, and as for the replay itself I selected a 150 second segment with lots going on to put a more intense load on the cards. Settings wise I went for 1080p with a low preset and epic view distance as well as a resolution scale of 100%. Looking at the charts, the 1060 averaged 139 frames per second, which distanced itself from the overclocked 770 by 26%. Not really sure what happened with the 7950 here as its performance was pretty underwhelming. An overclock didn't change much as we only saw a 26% jump in average frame rates and it was still well behind the stock GTX 770. Keep in mind that during actual gameplay, frame times were quite a bit worse on all of the cards, especially when first dropping in the map where a lot of hard stops are felt. Monster Hunter World is the next game that I tested, and here I opted for the low preset with 1080p. Also, I used the Fateful Encounters cutscene to get my numbers as it's very demanding and repeatable. The 1060 is topping the charts once again with 116 frames per second on average. Surprisingly, the overclocked HD 7950 saw itself in second place with 90 FPS, but at this mark, the 1060 was still 29% faster. 
The GTX 770 seems to be performing well below where it should in this game, as even when overclocked it couldn't keep pace with the stock 7950. Interestingly enough though, frame times were a lot tighter on the GTX 770. Overall, the game played nicely on all of the setups, but the 1060 is still in a world of its own. Next up we have The Witcher 3, and I use 1080p with the high preset with hairworks disabled along with post-processing using the high preset as well. The 1060 remained on top with 71 frames per second on average. This game saw excellent overclock scaling for the 7950 as it went from being the slowest of the bunch to building up just enough courage to barely edge out the overclock 770 for second place. Even then, the 1060 was still beating down the overclock 7950 by 32%. Now, I'd love to test this game's next gen update on these cards, but unfortunately, at the time of making this video, it isn't out yet. Even though I can't test it yet, I would speculate that all of these cards would have to opt for lower settings, seeing as it's supposed to be a major visual upgrade. The next game up is Project Cars 3, and I didn't go crazy here as I just chose medium settings throughout with super sampling set to low at 1080p. That being said, the 1060 is still the victor with an average of 56 frames per second. Again we can see the highly overclocked 7950 beating out the competing GTX 770, with frame times being much improved on the AMD card as well. Moving on to stock settings, they also remain close as the 770 is only 9% faster. Frame times were excellent on all of the cards, which made for a very good experience even on the older setups. Despite this though, the 1060 is still soundly beating the older high-end cards, being 30% faster than the next best thing. Minecraft is the next game, and I use the fancy settings with BSL shaders using the high preset in 1080p. The 1060 is still putting it down at first place with 67 frames per second on average, but the overclock 770 isn't too far behind at 59. The stock HD 7950 isn't doing too hot in this game, as it's kind of a slideshow with these settings. Overclocking helped quite a bit, but it's still not able to pass the stock GTX 770, which was odd to see. Frame times weren't great on any of the setups, but this is normal for Minecraft. Overall, these results were a pretty mixed bag, but it's nice to see the GTX 770 getting this close to the 1060. Finally, we have the oldest game in the suite, with Crisis. I enabled NVIDIA DSR or AMD VSR to allow for some higher resolutions, and used the built-in benchmark with 1440p at the very high preset in AXAA, which is pretty brutal even for these cards. The overclocked GTX 770 is nipping at the heels of the 1060, being just 2% behind at 42 frames per second. When overclocked, the HD7950 picks up just enough steam to pass the GTX 770 at stock settings. As to be expected for Crisis, frame times were extremely tight on all of the cards, and it was nice to see the 1060 wasn't so far ahead anymore, but I have a feeling this is only due to it lacking optimizations for this game. Alright, so adding everything up and averaging it all out, unsurprisingly the 1060 is the fastest card of the roundup, being 25% faster than the overclocked GTX 770 at second place. In third place we have the overclocked HD 7950, which in this test suite finds itself being 3% faster than the stock GTX 770, which ends up in fourth. And at the bottom we have the stock HD 7950, which as we can see is held back quite a bit by its conservative clock speeds. The stock GTX 770 is 27% faster than the stock HD 7950, but one thing to keep in mind is that if I had tested newer games, the 7950 would probably be smoking the 770 due to Kepler's poor performance in new titles. Also, the frame times look pretty bad when averaged out, but this is just due to CSGO's results. Rounding things off with power draw, I loaded up The Witcher 3 on all the setups with the same settings as before to measure total system power consumption. Keep in mind these numbers were taken directly from the wall and as such do not factor in PSU efficiency. That being said, the GTX 1060 consumes the least amount of power at 188 watts, with most of the power savings coming from the GP106 GPU being fabbed on the 16 nanometer node. Following up is the stock HD7950 consuming 22% more power at 229 watts, a good bump over the 1060 but nothing unreasonable. Next is the juicy GTX 770 which comes in at 282 watts. This is 50% more power than the 1060 and 23% more power than the HD 7950 at stock. Now when overclocked, the older cards start to pig out on power, with the HD 7950 OC consuming 345 watts, 
which is a huge 84% more power than the GTX 1060. It's not as much compared to the GTX 770 OC though, which sits fat and happy at the top with 380 watts, over double the total system power consumption of the GTX 1060, which is pretty huge if you ask me. So as this video concludes, it's clear to see that the GTX 1060 3GB is a very good performer in newer and older games alike. While the older flagships didn't win themselves any chicken dinners, they did come close to the mighty 1060 in a couple of scenarios. Now it would probably make more sense to switch out the cards I used for an R9 290 and GTX 780, but unfortunately I don't have them and they still seem to be pretty pricey on the used market. Either way, these older high-end cards put up a good fight against this popular mid-range monster, and if you're rocking either one of these cards, it may be worth hanging on to them for a little while longer if you're not playing any DX12 games. Also, it's surprising to see how much the gap has closed between Tahiti and GK104, as back in the day this GTX 770 should have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the HD7970 GHz edition, not the slower HD7950. If I had used DX12 games, it would have accentuated the GTX 770's performance and efficiencies, seeing as it definitely needs optimizations to perform at its best, where the HD7950 doesn't have that limitation. Anyhow, it was fun to test out these cards and satisfy this personal curiosity, and I hope you guys found this comparison interesting as well. With that though, thank you all for watching, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.